his eye. Hey everyone, glad to see you back, glad to see you looking fresh. Gamera is a name that I'm sure some of you probably have heard before, but I'm also sure that most of you almost definitely have never heard that name before. And that's okay, because I am here to introduce this fellow King Kaiju to you all. This is Gamera, a big reptilian creature that breathes fire. He sounds pretty familiar, right? Many would classify Gamera as a ripoff of a certain other King of the Monsters. And while this is an apt description for his creation, I feel like leaving it at that leaves a long, long history left undiscussed, and that is just not really fair. In 1965, the world was introduced to a new universe of films that was not connected to Toho's current MonsterVerse. But nobody would fault you for making the connection and believing that they were connected all along. Much like Goji, the first film is a self-contained, black-and-white film all about a singular monster. Then, every film after introduced someone new for the titular monster to fight, so we go from Gamera to a slew of versus films, fighting a whole bunch of different monsters with such faces as, like, Baragon, not Baragon, mind you, because that would be much too similar to a fellow monster from the Toho verse, and we don't want too many connections going on. Baragon is a chameleon looking beast who attacks using ice breath, which makes sense going against Gamera's fire breath, and he can also shoot rainbows from his spikes which makes a whole lot less sense, but honestly is a lot more fun than the Ice Breast thing. Then after that, we go against Gyaos, who is probably Gamera's most famous antagonist, but considering Gamera really isn't even a name a lot of people know, Gyaos, I don't expect you to know off the top of your head. He looks like a certain other flying pterodon that we may know and love. There are a couple differences and similarities because that's how this series likes to go. But one big difference is that Rodan loves to use fire and he's used fire in the past. Yaos isn't a big fan of it. He gets attacked by it. He's kind of weak to it so he's developed ways of protecting himself from it as having a monster who uses fire, fight another monster who can fly and use fire. It seems a bit counterintuitive. But then after Gauss, we have Viras, who is a big googly squid monster from space. And he likes to peck things with his beak, and he likes to poke things with his tentacles, and he can talk telepathically. And he just, I mean, just look at the guy. He's very strange looking. Also, when researching this guy, the wiki page for the Kaijuverse implied that Malamar, the, the sixth gen Pokemon, could have been inspired by Virus, so I figured that would mention it. After that, we have Giddon, who might be my favorite because, I mean, he's a real beast of a creature, and he's, he's basically like just a land shark. But he also has a knife for a face. And he can also shoot shurikens out of his nose. I mean, there's not much more to say. If that description doesn't sell you, then nothing really will. And then we have Zigar, who is a sort of inverted Triceratops-looking monster. She has a bunch of strange abilities. She's also the first female monster of the bunch. Also, to make things more confusing, when her film came over to the States, she was called Monster X, who, of course, is the name of another fellow monster from a different universe. Like, that name wasn't already taken. And then after Zigar, we have Zigra, who is a, a shark bird covered in blades that do just all kinds of slashing, and they help him swim very quickly. On land, he can't do a lot other than shoot a hypnosis beam out of his head gem, and then he can also stand up because he can grow appendages. Now, I thought some of the Godzilla monsters were strange, but some of these guys really take the win on that front. And then in its eighth and end of its own Showa era, Gamera basically has a pieced together film for, filled with old footage and is packaged as a new film and it's 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 not great. But at least we forget Goji did the same thing with All Monsters Attack. So whether Gamera fell into the same pitfalls or it was intentional to duplicate one more idea, it's yet another strange comparison to bring up between these two. It's not all bad and weird though. Much like Godzilla, the High Psy era was a rousing success in reviving the franchise and making an excellent trilogy of films that we can still look back on fondly. Many would argue that for a time, Gamera was even better than Godzilla, which is a fair argument. The director of the High Psy films, Shusuke Kanako, did a great job with these, that he would even get a shot at a Godzilla film, making GMK one of the best in the entire franchise in a breath of fresh air for the King of the Monsters Millennium Era. Unfortunately, the momentum didn't keep up with Gamera, 
and it would be until 2006 till we received the last full-length Big Turtle film in Gamera the Brave, which, albeit, was pretty good. It didn't really live up to the lofty heights of the previous Heisei era, and thus is the only film from his own Millennium Era. But it proved that there was a place for Gamera to exist in the modern filmscape. Then, almost a decade later, in 2015, we got a glimpse of what could be a new Gamera film. What existed as pretty much a proof-of-concept short film, also a trailer of sorts for a Gamera pseudo-reboot created for the 50th anniversary of the franchise. Now, this is a very good trailer. It made me very excited for a movie that doesn't exist, and I hope it does exist in the future. And going off of that, looking into the future, the, the logical thing would be to make that movie. But the fan in me, my mind immediately goes to, let's finally put these two reptilian kings against each other in the crossover that many kaiju fans have been asking for for years. I do believe that that's a film that, even if it wasn't great, would be talked about going forward probably forever in the minds of kaiju fans. I don't think there'd be one kaiju fan who wouldn't want to see that. Seeing something of this scale in the modern era, I don't care if it's made by Toho or Legendary, either one, whether we want to do it, you know, classically with the old suits or we want to do it all CGI. And I hope that with the success of Godzilla Kong that Maybe this might be in the cards for us. That's about it for Gamera and his backstory, who he is, who he's fought, what the future could look like. I'm excited to see more Gamera in the future. This is a interesting series to look onto. I hope that maybe you guys check it out. I wouldn't recommend much else other than the High Side trilogy. They're numbered, makes it a lot easier. Very easy to find. Scouting every Gamera film was not nearly as hard as scouting every Godzilla film. So if you guys want to check out every film here, be my guest. You can watch the Mystery Science Theater 3000 versions of a few of them. So if you're a fan of that show, if you've never seen that show and you want to check these out, that's a fun way to do it as well. That'll about do it for me. That'll about do it for Gamera. As always, thank you so very much for watching. Like this if you like this. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you at some point.